Hello and welcome to Trojans Live. Joined by our new tight ends coach, although he's been here the last uh, couple years, I think it is now, but uh, takes over a, a full-time coaching position. Seth Dagey, uh, coach, welcome to the show. And uh, you know, tell us uh, you know, about your new role and, and, and how do you approach it and, and, and get the most out of that tight end room? Yeah, but I appreciate you guys having me. Um, I'm super excited about the opportunity. And like you said, I've been around, I've been around the program now for a couple of years. So I kind of know those kids and going into that room. I know, I know exactly what we have from the personnel standpoint and exactly kind of what their strengths and weaknesses are. And, and the best thing about it is they know me, right? So it's not like just a new face coming in. It's a, it's, it's, it's a guy that they've kind of, they've kind of heard my voice before and they know what type of style uh, co coaching style I have and what I believe in. And, and, and so we're going to continue to build on, you know, what's been built on here in the previous years. Coach, you're kind of uh, becoming known as a recruiting specialist on the team. You kind of send you out there and you've been bringing the guys high energy. A lot of the recruits uh, speak very highly, especially the, some of the quarterbacks coming in. Uh, what, what, what about in recruitment do you enjoy? And what do you, where do you get that energy to do that recruiting process? I think it's just vibing with the kids. You know, I'm still, I'm only 32 years old. I'm not too far removed from the game. Um, this is something I loved. You know, I, my dad was a high school football coach. So I grew up around football my entire life. This is what I love to do. And so it's easy to, it's easy to talk to a bunch of kids about what they love to do when it's what you love to do still. And, uh, and obviously with USC on your chest, it makes it a little easier because the brand speaks for itself. And, uh, and we have a, we have a unique product here. Um, and I think those kids are starting to see it, uh, especially what, you know, especially what we're doing offensively. So, um, you know, I, I think from, from, from my standpoint, it's just, I love, I love talking to kids that love football and I think they, they love talking to me and, and we, we create really good relationships, uh, you know, just kind of vibing off each other. We're listening to Seth Dagey, the new tight end coach. And, uh, you know, it's, we, we've talked to Drake London and sort of asked him about this before. You know, he's, very much views himself as a wide receiver, but Sean mentioned recruiting. And I'm just wondering when you, when you go out on the recruiting trail, are you looking for his body type and his skill set, or are you looking more for what I would call a traditional, you know, tight end, you know, someone that's, uh, you know, can block as, as well as catch it. What, what do you, what do you think fits best in this offense? Because oftentimes we talk about Drake as sort of filling that super productive modern day tight end role. Yeah, I think you guys are spot on. Um, you know, Drake for us is like the ideal why that he plays right now. And so from a tight end's perspective, we want we want that hybrid between Drake and, you know, EK, who's yeah. 6'4", 250 pounds, that can, you know, you know, also do some things in the run game, but have the athletic ability of Drake London to, you know, split him out and be dangerous in the pass game. So basically, we're trying to find the hybrid between Drake and uh, EK. And so if you could uh, picture Drake being 235 pounds, then you have the perfect tight end in our world, right? Uh, I played with a guy at Texas Tech named Jason Morrow, who was about 6'5", 240, and he was a 4'5 guy, uh, had great ball skills, could run routes. You know, he caught 106 balls his junior year, but he played that Y position as well as the H and the tight end position. So he was kind of the hybrid role of all three of those different positions. And that's kind of like where we want to get to. Coach, we've got spring ball coming up, and I know I know you all, you coaches, you get excited about spring ball. You guys are foaming at the mouth to get back out there. <laughs> oh, man, here we go, spring ball. But, what, but, Coach, what are you going to be zeroing in for your guys? What are you trying to work on this spring ball, and what are you trying to get those young guys, uh, you know, caught up with everybody else? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have some veterans. Like, EK and Follow, they have a really good idea of what we want to do and what we're about, you know. And then, but you have Ethan Ray, who hasn't, you know, hasn't played football in a long time. Uh, yeah. Jude coming off an injury. Uh, we have Lake uh, Lakes here. You know, he's an early enrollee. Um, and we got a couple walk-ons that, you know, I think that that could be productive, especially on special teams that we need to kind of get in the mix. And so there's going to be a lot of focus on those younger guys to get those guys rolling uh, for, on a consistent basis, you know, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and, and, and being able to execute it over and over again. Um, so it's just kind of tuning up EK and follow and making sure those uh, those young guys continue to grow. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, you, you're not that old of a guy. It wasn't too long ago that you were out there as the gunslinger. So, you know, you set, well, you were a quarterback. You set NCAA record. You went 40 of 44 in one game. Can you remember 
the four incompletions. I want this is a little Sean McVay test here. I want you to go through because I bet I bet you remember what kept you from being forty four or forty four that day. I can't remember what kept me from actual 40, 40 or 44. Yeah, 44 or 44. But I can remember uh, 42 or 44 because there was two drops. Like one, <laughs> and you let yeah. those guys know. Yeah, one was, at a, <laughs> one was on a fade and then one was on a crossing route. So, you know, it's funny. The funny story about that whole that whole game was, one, it was a, run, a rain delay. So, you know, there's a two-hour rain delay. So, we, you know, we got – we kicked off a lot later than expected. So you're in the, in the locker room, just eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, just hanging out. And then all of a sudden you got to go play. But the other thing was, is our very last drive I was in, they put me in and we threw like a quick screen and they took me out. And I said, what, what was that all about? And they were like, well, you just broke NCAA record. Right. So the, <laughs> the record was actually broke on like a little quick screen to the left. So uh, it was pretty fun. Cause I had no idea what was going on. Which it's got to be great to have a couple quarterbacks on the staff. I'm, I'm, I was wondering today who's got the who still got the best arm on that thing, man. I know you're probably maybe the youngest on there still, so I, I'm, I put my money on you. But who else can still wing it? Oh, that's you know that's me all day. You know, Graham Graham will tell you <laughs> different, right? Uh, but we're all we're, we're super competitive, right? And so we go out there and we can still sling it around. Uh, Coach Helton still thinks he can throw it, but he's not even close. You know, it's just <laughs> it's it's Graham and I are running away with that thing, no doubt. You know, you mentioned it. There's a lot of guys with Texas ties, not University of Texas, the state of Texas. Either they coach there, or they play there, or they're from there. I'm just wondering how many guys from Texas before you guys just start wearing cowboy hats in the McKay Center? Because I've seen some photos of you wearing a cowboy hat, so I know you got a few in the closet. Man, you know, I have a few. I don't, I don't necessarily like to wear the cowboy hats because I don't want to disrespect the people that actually work uh, and ride you know, cowboys. Like rodeo. You know what I mean? People that actually are cowboys. You know what I mean? That's like, that's like somebody wearing a, a football helmet that has no idea what actually goes into playing football. So, you know, I, I kind of keep the hats uh, put away, but uh, you never know. We get a couple more Texas guy, guys in here. We might start wearing some boots. You know, boots around the campus. You know, get some people to to wear some spurs or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll bring a horse to the to the office. I don't know. Something crazy like that. <laughs> You got to get some sweet travel outfits, man. That'll be nice. Get guys roll up in your travel outfits. A bunch of cowboy hats would be good. That's right. The, Tex the Texas takeover is almost complete, said Daggy. Uh, your new tight ends coach has been here for a few years now, though, and he's got a talented room. Uh, looking forward to seeing the kind of progress he makes with that group this spring. Thanks for joining us, Coach. We look forward to talking to you uh, throughout the season.